Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Shri Shiva Sadi Gaura Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Hare Hare Here Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is almost literally opening his heart The subject is Bhaktivinoda's lamentation. This is more intense than lamentation, it's desperation, practically devastation. Sometimes we hear that Srila Bhaktisthan Saswar Thakur was extremely intense and Bhaktivinoda Thakur was quite mild in comparison but we don't find any there's, there's nothing in this whole song which could be described as mild the extremely intense calling out to Gopinath uh. <clears throat> almost in madness. He says, Manje Pagalamo, my mind is mad. It's uh, like, considering that material consciousness is a perverted reflection of spiritual consciousness, this, here Bhaktivinoda Thakur, Not exactly as an artistic representative. Sometimes an artist may paint something or someone may write something, someone may make some music as some kind of fancy or because they have to make a living or some such thing. But although this is poetry, it's in a particular meter, it has order and structure, but it's, it's like the calling out of Mm. someone who's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. <laughs> you just can't, nothing seems to make any sense. I tried. <clears throat> I want to, but I, I want to come to you, but I did everything I was supposed to, but it's just not just not working, I, 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 seeing a desperate situation. In a dis desperate situation, and there's no hope but Gopinath, but it doesn't seem that he, he's, I'm praying for the mercy, but why aren't you giving it? It's almost, a, this doesn't come in the series of songs, Sharanagati, in which there is uh, Rakshishya Titi Vishvaso Gopritve Varanang Tata. There is uh, faith in the Lord's protection that He will maintain me. It's almost as if Bhaktivinoda Thakur here is saying, it uh, reminds us of the prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. My Lord, why have you forsaken me? Song of Desperation. Now, presumably, when Bhaktivinoda, we, we don't have in his, uh, in the record of the life as he was seen by ordinary people, Kedarnath Dutta, respectable government officer, we see a very uh, balanced, to talk in modern psychological terms, very balanced person, um, not mild, he, uh, even in his external dealings, he was uh, resolute, as in the punishment of Bishikishan, the, the uh, uh, so-called yogi who claimed himself to be 
an avatar of Mahavishnu who is going to kill all the English, so he said. In the meantime, while he was waiting to kill all the English, he was having illicit affairs with uh, various women. <coughs> the Bhaktivinoda was very resolute in his punishment of him. So, from the external point of view, Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a very uh, sober-minded and strong-minded. Uh, but internally, he was, uh, we, can, we can understand, he went through uh, great turmoil in his spiritual life, uh, ups and downs, it appears like that. He's put this into poetry form so that we can pray. Do we pray? Do we pray like this? Bhaktivinoda Thakur is showing us how to pray. If we, we say pray from the bottom of our heart, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is praying from the bottom of the heart and finding that in the bottom of his heart there's a lot of stuff which really shouldn't be there. Uh, all this has to be understood in uh, relation to what I said yesterday, that the pure devotees, by some arrangement of the Lord's internal potency, find themselves to be impure and, con and contaminated where there is no contamination. It's inconceivable. So there's their songs are simultaneously for themselves calling out in great humility uh, and at the same time they serve these songs serve as suitable songs for us to to call for the mercy of Gopinath, to call for the mercy of Bhaktivinoda Thakur especially here in uh, the Holy Dham last time I was here in Mayapur, I selected some songs of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur expressing his uh, love for the Holy Dham. And there could be many series of songs uh, highlighting different songs of Bhaktivinoda Thakur on various themes within his poetry, his poetry which is generally sung as Kirtan, his love for the Holy Dham his love for the holy name. Now we're going through Bhaktivinoda's lamentation, Bhaktivinoda's bliss, his uh, autobiographical notes, many of his songs, they're, they're, very, they're very, they're specific to his own personal life. His, uh, his uh, partisanship to Radha over Krishna, that he also clearly reveals his desires to enter a, a spiritual female body and is actually doing so. Uh, <clears throat> All these themes are there. In this song, he seems to be far away from his oh, and of course one major theme of Bhaktivinoda Thakur's songs is his his love for the holy name and his uh, he made several songs uh, giving names of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and of Krishna so this song seems to be far far away from the perfection of life but to practically even to be able to pray like this one's already on the the verge of the perfection of life, even though one may seem to be so far away. But just the, the very intensity itself, <clears throat> the very intensity in devotional service, that itself guarantees success. Tivrena bhakti yogena yajita purushampara. With great intensity, one should prosecute devotional service to Krishna. Intensity in and of itself 
doesn't uh, bring perfection. One, one can be uh, intensely nasty also. Uh, demons can be very intense also. Or just because a devotee is intense doesn't necessarily mean that they're completely pure. They may, due to some previous um, sanskaras or uh, impressions or the effect of impressions within their mind, they may be very strong-minded. Mm. But it doesn't. that's not necessarily si simultaneous with in intense purity in Krishna consciousness. But in, in the case of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, of course, it is. Mm. So uh, these prayers, if by singing them we can uh, by the mercy of Bhaktino Thako, we can uh, we can imbibe the same mood of intensity. The, the same, if we can, if we can, even somewhat imbibe that, that will be a great help for us on our path to Krishna. Uh, there's all the great Vaishnava Acharyas, they all compose songs and writing in their various moods in executing Krishna consciousness. So, yeah, of all the songs of, uh, yeah, but you know, there's, there's a mood of, in all of them of intensity. Uh, sometimes we think this. Uh, this Mayavadi idea is pervasive in the world today that a spiritually advanced person is very mild and just smiles and non judgmental and all various vague terms are ascribed compassion, gratefulness, humility, but all all uh, without giving the the point. It's certainly, a pure devotee is compassionate and humble, and all these things. But the point the point is fully centered on Krishna. Now, one of the qualities of a pure devotee is mentioned that he's mild, mridu. He's mild. <clears throat> So that may be there also. He doesn't get intensely involved in sense gratification or in anything to do with this material world. The pure devotee doesn't become intensely involved in political matters. Should we vote for, in West Bengal, Trinamool or Bam Front? Or, you know, People get intensely involved in all kinds of useless matters, but a devotee is uh, aloof from all such things and intensely focused on Krishna. So we read the translation of this song, a translation of this song yesterday. It was a rather loose translation, and uh, we can go through this again if you like. You can read the, read the song as we go through it. And especially those of you who are familiar with Indian languages, it'll be very helpful for you to read the because read the words as we go through it, as because most of them are um, pretty much the same words in all Indian languages. Gopinath, well, that's in every Indian language. Mama, that's Sanskritam. Mama, my nivedana. That will be in every Indian language. You, do you speak any other language apart from Hindi and English? Hindi, you, you don't know you Hindi. Huh? So nivedana is there in Hindi. Is there in Bengali? Is there in Oriya? Is there in Telugu? I guess it must be. Maybe not in Tamil, <laughs> but uh, it'll be there in every. So it's Shuno. Uh, the different forms of that will be there in English. Uh, sorry. Uh, Bengali, Hindi, Uriya, all these languages. Maybe not in Telugu, but anyway. Uh, so we, if you read through. So he says, Gopinath, 
Mama ne veda na shuno. He's not, it's not very polite. <laughs> Just listen, listen to what I'm saying. I'm, I'm, Nivedan means I'm making a humble submission, uh, but it's, it's almost like calling, you, you got to listen to me. You listen here. I've got something to say to you. <laughs> uh, calling his attention. Uh, demanding his attention. Bishoi Durjana Shada Kamaroto Kichu Nahi Moraguna. Yeah, Bhaktino Thakur describes himself, and it's we can't think like this. If we think like this, then we we are uh, great offenders. But he thinks of himself. He openly expresses that he is a a materialist, Vishai Durjana which means a bad person, a rascal. Shada Kamarata, always attached to material desire, always absorbed in material desires. And there's not even slightly any good quality in myself. So this he's calling out to go, Gopin, I've got to tell you something. I'm just introducing myself. This is my situation. But, nevertheless, Gopinath, again and again, he's like, Gopinath, 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 and that beat in which it's sung, it's a very insistent, Gopinath, Gopinath. It's just like, like the, the child will call again and again until the mother must respond. Mother, mother, man, she's ignoring Mother, you gotta, you gotta listen to her. Mother, she knows. She keeps on, if he keeps on harassing her enough, she's gonna respond. So he said again and again, Gopinath, Gopinath. It's a very insistent beat. Again and the, again and again it comes. So I have no good quality. I'm a fool. I'm a rascal. I'm a, I'm a sense gratifier. But he says, but you are my hope. I'm our bharasha to me. This Bharasha word, I think that's not, uh, it's not Sanskrit, huh? It's pretty, hmm? Bharasha, Bharosha. Yeah, it comes in Hindi, Bharosha. But I don't think it's Sanskrit. Do you know? I never saw it in Sanskrit. I think it must come from Urdu, or whatever Urdu is. From. So you are my hope. This this again, Bhaktivinoda uh, Thakur will, many of the, Many of the themes he says, it's, it's repetitive. He says the same thing. Almost, it's just again and again saying the same thing. You are my, you are my hope. Yeah, I used to see that, you see that on the rickshaws. I used to see in Bangladesh. Allah, Borasha. God is our hope. Tomara Charane Loinusha. I've taken shelter at your feet. I am your servant. Tomara kinkara ami. Kinkara gives... Servant is a... In English we have the word servant. Yeah, it's a very general term. Just like we have people say, I am a government servant. But it's all very... It's somewhat distant. So, you're a government servant. You're sitting in writer's building and <coughs> filling up some forms. But kinkara means personal. So he's right there. Serving personally, I'm I am your servant, right? You know that, huh? I've taken shelter of you. Gopinath came on a show be more. Now you got to think: of, How are you going to purify me? How are you going to do it? Huh? You see, I'm I'm fallen. I'm I'm sense gratifier, but I am your servant. Now, it's your job to purify me. How are you going to do it? You better start thinking about it. Huh? He didn't say, I don't know bhakti, najani bhakti, karme jaram, my, my consciousness is sunk in dull material affairs, but I'm your servant. I'm your servant, but I'm in this situation. Karme jarati, Shadhina nahe ekaya. My, my, body, my body is not, it's not independent. Uh, I, I just can't 
do whatever I like. Oh, I missed that. Parichi samsara guy. I've fallen into the uh, ghore again and again. Several times in this song, he'll say, ghore means terrible. So I've fallen into this material existence. Dark, horrible, ghore mean, means something very terrible, I guess we could translate. Very, very dark and horrible. Parichi samsara guy. Everything, Gopinas, it's all your Maya. It's your Maya. I'm in Maya, but it's your Maya. It's all your illusion. I don't have the, I don't have any strength. Where are we going here? I don't have any strength. Nahim I don't have any clear, clear knowledge. And my body is also, it's not under, not under my control. So again and again he's emphasizing, I'm in a hopeless position. Gopinath Niyata Charne Stana. So Niyata is a, a, means Nitya. He's begging for an internal place at the lotus feet of Gopinath. Magaye Pama, this sinful person is begging in eternal position at your lotus feet, crying and crying. So be merciful. Korahe Koruna Dan, be merciful. Show your, give your mercy to me. Gopinath Tumitur Shokali Pama, you can do anything and everything, you can do whatever you like. Durjane Tarite Tomara Shokati. You can lift up the rascals. You can deliver the rascal. You can deliver anyone. Keache Papiro Ara. And who's more sinful than me? This uh, this is a repeated theme of the Vaishnavas praying that you are meant for. Potita pavana hetu tava avata moshama potita prabhu na paibaya narotam das. Uh, he prays that you you have descended in this world for the very purpose of purifying the fallen. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> I'm. You won't find anyone more. You won't find anyone more fallen than me. So this is. Uh, he's saying that you you. Then again, yeah, continuing the theme. Tumi Kripa Paraba, you are the ocean of mercy. Jibera Karane Ashia Proponche, Lila Koile Shubishta. For the sake of the Jivas, you come to this material world and you profuse, you, you show all your pastimes. You don't, you don't have to do that. Gopinath. You don't have to come to this material world and perform your pastimes with the gopis, but you do so for the sake of the fallen souls within this material world. That's your mercy, to deliver the fallen souls. I'm fallen. You are Gopinath. You, you come here out of your mercy to show your pastimes. And we know in Krishna's pastimes, that of course, when he comes, he delivers so many conditioned souls. He even delivers so many demons. He says, Puritranaya sadhunam vinashayata dushkritam dharmasang sthapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. He says, to deliver the uh, pious and to destroy the miscreants. Uh, by doing this, uh, establishing the principles of religion, he appears in every age. But pr practically, he destroys so many demons and he also gives them salvation. And some of the demons, they don't only get salvation, but especially those who are killed by Krishna himself, they, uh, they attain to devotional service with him. So Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur says, Amiki doshe doshe. Am I the worst of all sinners? Because all the demons, they attain to your lotus feet, but I'm still here. So you can see the theme that 
uh, you can do anything. You can you can make the worst demon into your devotee. You can give him shelter at your lotus feet. You're an ocean of mercy. You come to this world for this very purpose to deliver the most fallen. You've delivered so many sinful people. I'm here begging you to deliver me. I'm not. I'm not worthy of. I, I'm your servant. I declare myself to be your servant. I'm not worthy to be your servant. But you, you are adosha darshi. You, you are one who doesn't see the faults. I'm the worst. I'm the, I, I must be the worst of all sinners because you delivered so many demons, but not me. He goes on, Gopinath, Ghuchao Shangshara Jala. You, you just, this, this uh, there, there are several analogies about the nature of material existence. One is that we're burning in the fire of material existence, is one of the analogies. So he's praised to Gopinath. You just, Remove it. You can do it. Tumito shakale paro. Uh, I'm burning in the fire, materials. Abhidya jatana. The the uh, the pain, the punishment, the oppression of avidya, which is usually translated as ignorance, non knowledge. But it's not just non knowledge. It's wrong knowledge because there's always consciousness in the living being so if he doesn't have proper knowledge then he adopts a uh, <coughs> an opposite way of thinking abhinivesh a different way of thinking so by which he conducts his existence uh, so being the, the, the the tortures, uh, the pain of ignorance. I cannot tolerate it anymore. Uh, wh wh what is that? Because of avidya, ignorance. We're going around and around. Janama marana mala. Going round and around on the wheel of birth and death. It's no joke. <laughs> Often we like to joke. Joking is not forbidden. <laughs> but uh, really spiritual life, it's, it's a very serious matter. Now the really serious thing is forgetfulness of Krishna. But we're not even aware of that. We're hardly even aware of that. But what we can be aware of, or the very least we can be aware of, is that we are in the frightful position of being in a chain of birth and death, which goes on and on and on and on and on, and there's no end in sight. And the human form of life is very rare. There's so many different species. To get a human life is very rare. Now we have the opportunity. So, uh, at least if we can begin to pray like this, we can make a start. I'm suffering in this material existence. I have to get out. I don't, I'm helpless. I don't have any strength to get out. Gopinath. Help me, calling out helplessly. Srila Prabhupada also said that in chanting Hare Krishna, one should call out like a child calls for his mother, helplessly, uh, with full protection, that the mother is there, and demanding also. The, the child expects, you have to come. If the, if the mother doesn't come, the child bawls out louder and louder until the mother comes, eventually the mother will come. So his situation, he explained, 
I'm, I'm on this chain of repeated birth and death. Gopinath, Amito Kamera Das. Now he's already said, Tomara Kinkara Ami. So there are these two themes running throughout it, throughout this song. I'm your servant. He again and again says, I am your servant. And again and again he says, I'm a servant of lust. So he's caught between the two positions. I want to that serve Krishna. That is my actual situation. But that is my real situation. But I find myself at the present time caught in a situation where I'm simply a servant of lust and I can't get out of that. I meant to be serving you. I want to serve you. But the actual reality that I experience is that I'm, I'm a servant of lust. And he goes on to explain it more. Bishoya bhashana jagit che hridoye fandi che karama fash. The uh, desires for sense enjoyment lie deep within the heart. This is a, a topic that sometimes we hear devotees say that, well, after coming to Krishna consciousness, I feel material desire is increasing more. Sometimes we hear that. Or we may see a very innocent child. How did he grow up to be such a bad person? Maybe, maybe Hitler was a charming little boy at one point in time. What happened to him? What happened? They're, they're deep within the heart. There are so many material desires. And we may think, well, I didn't have them before. How is it that they've come up now? You did have them. We did have, we all have so many. We don't even know how many desires we have in our hearts. Every Every, at every moment we're interacting with the sense objects, desiring something, uh, non-desiring something, or becoming averse to something. Raga, dvesha. Attachment and aversion. And even when we think, even when we imagine some sense, some, something, Oh, I would like to be a beauty queen. So, I'm a, But that also creates an impression within the mind. It all goes into the story. It all gets stored up. It may remain there for many, we may go through many, many lifetimes. And then certain desires become manifest. Sometimes it's compared to... Uh, air bubbles become stuck in mud at the bottom of a lake and somehow by the in, in over a long course of time that air bubble may just escape and come to the surface so those those deeply rooted desires karma ashaya this is called karma ashaya the reservoir of desires for activity in this material world is that we have a huge stockpile of material desires. So, Bhaktivinoda you know, Thakur says, Vishoy Bhashana. Bhashana, this uh, deeply rooted, not even specifically formulated desires. One may, there may be a general lust within the heart, general desire, but then that may become activated when a person comes in contact with the object of material desire. For instance, uh, uh, someone may be practicing as a very good brahmachari, like Rishi Ashringa. His father had him become a very good brahmachari by keeping him away from any women. He didn't know what women were at all until he came in contact with them when his father was away from the ashram. And then the desires arose within his heart to enjoy female company. 
So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, Vishaya Bhashana, Jagid Chaitrita, within my heart those desires for material enjoyment have awakened. So it becomes a very dangerous situation. If one, one is trying to be Krishna conscious and material, you may not even know, we may not even know you have so many material desires in our hearts and they, they may all arise like, like a big tsunami of desires. Which, how can you stop? What, what can you do to stop them, to hold them back? They're coming in and rushing and drowning us. What are we to do? But you know, Tako. He gives another example here. Uh, it's just, uh, it's become like a noose for hanging me. Finally, it's, I, I'm being hung by the different uh, analogies he's giving. This will come up right at the end of the song also. You may... In material life, we may have so many plans and aspirations, but if all of a sudden you're taken away and hung, well, it's all over. Those plans, they all go into storage for the next lifetime, for the next human life especially. So in the same way, we may have so many plans and aspirations to serve Krishna. But if we become overcome by material desires, then it's... It can be almost as if it's completely stopped. Our spiritual life may seem just to come to an end. A very dangerous situation. Of course, spiritual life is never at an end, but it may uh, just get covered over. So he's asking, Gopinath, Kobe ba Jagibawami, when am I going to awake? My material desires have awoken, now when am I going to awake? That's not me, those desires are not me, but my enemy in the form of lust, Kama Rupa or Ori, my enemy in the form of lust. When am I going to awake and throw away, leave at a great distance, uh, these, uh, this lust, Kama Rupa Ori, Dure tayagibo, hridoi to me. At that time, you will manifest within my heart. When Bhaktivinoda Thakur speaks about lust, it's not, uh, it means general maturity. It's not just uh, gross desire for sexual activity, but uh, as he will say, dhana, dara, shuta, for desire for wealth, wife, children, all the things that people generally aspire for, to be a respectable person within this material world. But it just binds one in a useless existence, which binds one to this material world over and over again, and one just forgets his real duty. As this is the Russian class, there's the uh, there's a work by Leo Tolstoy, The Death of Ilan Ilyevich. I didn't pronounce it properly, which you may be aware of, in which it says a, a man has got his dhan dara sutta. He's living a very respectable middle class life thinking, very nice, everything's good, I'm uh, well positioned, people like me, people respect me. Then all of a sudden, he, he's about to die, falls down from a step ladder or something and gets an injury and then he, gets, he thinks he's going to recover and it gets worse and he realizes, I just have a short time to live, maybe a few days. And then he gets the realization that I live my... What do I live my life for? It is nothing. It's all useless. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, from the external... Of course, he didn't know about Krishna. Prabhupada hadn't been to Russia at that time. But uh, he's realized the uselessness. So generally people are very interested in 
all these things. When we say calm, we often think of that as uh, as sexual desire, but it means general desire, which calm and lobha, they're very much interlinked. The, the desire to accumulate, to have possessions. He, he will speak about this in later. That, to be, to, that one's identity is formed by possessions, nice house, offspring, Sri Aishvarya Prajep Sava, in the words of the Bhagavatam. One is surrounded, Srila Prabhupada describes that, one is surrounded by uh, aristocratic, with very nicely dressed women, with very nice saris and jewelry, and all behaving in a very cultured, nice way. Uh, and children, grandchildren, property, respectability, these are all, uh, uh, these are all simply a manifestation of one's material desires. As Srila Prabhupada once said, as he, in India, he was visiting the house of a rich man, and in those days, a joint family was the norm, especially in rich families, Marwari or whatever. So the man brought to Srila Prabhupada, this is my wife, introduced her, all being brought for blessings. This is my wife, this is my first brother, this is my second brother, and his family, these are my children, these are my grandchildren. Srila Prabhupada turned to some of his disciples and presumably not in the hearing of that man said, this is my sex life. <coughs> See, this is my success. And I have expanded. Yeah, please everyone turn off your cell phone. I've expanded my sex life. I've become very successful in this material world by expanding my... I'm able to maintain such a big house and, and everyone is uh, living very comfortably. Srila Prabhupada also gave the example. He knew one rich man who worked very hard. He had so many wives and mistresses and children and he was going to, he was going to die. He said to the doctor, you please give me four years more because I want to provide each of my offspring with at least 5,000 rupees. Of course, nowadays, 5,000 rupees, in that, but in those days, it was quite a lot of money. But the doctor said, I can't, I, can't, I can't preserve your life for four minutes more, or to speak of four years more. So in this way, uh, one is... Uh, one is victimized by the enemy called lust, if one can understand that I'm a victim of lust, well, that's a beginning to get free from it. Most people don't even realize. They'll become very upset if we say to them that, well, uh, yes, you see, I have a big institution and a big family and I'm maintaining it very well. And say, well, yeah, well, you're a great, you're a great uh, victim of lust. They wouldn't even understand what we're saying. Oh, you're, you, you're, I, you're a servant of material... I have so many servants, but you yourself are a servant of material desire. They can't even begin to understand that. If we can begin to understand, then we can begin to get out of the problem. But Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying that, yeah, I understand, the pro I understand the problem very well. I'm supposed to be your servant, but I'm stuck in this position of lust. And again, from the external point of view, but, you know, Tako looked to be actually very similar to that. Uh, was it Ivan Ilyevich, who was a magistrate, a well-placed magistrate in the imagination of Leo Tolstoy. Uh, but, you know, Tako actually was a very respectable position, large family, he, he refers to this in several of his... So he has a large family, which was quite normal in those days. And then, of course, he would have to be busy uh, 
uh, in arranging for the marriage of his children. That was a, a major factor of family life in India previously. If you have 13 children and you have to, you have to arrange for their marriage, it's an age marriage, it's quite a big affair. Now, nowadays, of course, the marriage is a big affair, but a big pandal is put up and this and that. But it's only a few hours. But in traditional societies, big, finding a proper husband for the wife, or for, for, she's not a wife yet, for the girl, for the daughter, uh, being very careful about this, one has to consider not just somebody to do astrological matching, but the uh, the whole family she's going to get married in, is it suitable for our family? Uh, every family is very careful to maintain their respectability uh, in various ways. They have to have enough money, and they have to not only have money, they have to show it off by giving liberally in charity, That's a, that also maintains your respectability, the ability to give and to be seen to give in charity. Uh, people open hospitals, and it's not just because they're, they care for suffering people. They may not care at all, but they have to do something like that for their respectability. When you get money, then you have to show, yes, I'm doing good for others, and you, you gain respectability. And if you don't do things like that, you lose respectability, you consider it miserly. So all these considerations come when one becomes a servant of lust. Uh, and therefore, uh, persons who are interested in liberation from this material world, they generally step out of society altogether. There's a very good way to become detached from all that. Just leave it all. Have nothing more to do with it. There are many, I mean, literally millions of examples in the history of India, and even today we see sadhus, so many sadhus, who they just, we don't know what their background is. If you're to ask them, they wouldn't tell you. Sadhus aren't supposed to. They left it behind. They have nothing more to do with it. They'll just wander from holy place to holy place. And that's it. That's their life. They don't have any more responsibility. But you know, Thakur didn't recommend that. He recommended, in the modern age, it's better to live as a Grihastha. Of course, Pakistan says, right, Thakur. He didn't fully support that. <laughs> uh, or rather, he was very strong on uh, not entering into family life. But uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he showed how to live in this world as a responsible member of society and at the same time be... Uh, fully focused on Krishna consciousness. Of course, he also uh, eventually left his government service. As soon as he could, he retired and came to Navadi Dham. So, uh, he's, he's asking then, when will I wake up and be, be out of this Karma, this whole, uh, this whole network, which he'll describe a little later, the whole network which is set up by material desire, then, this is actually a very important uh, statement here, then Krishna will manifest in my heart. Then you will, then you will manifest in my heart. So, he's reminding Gopinath, again and again, Gopinath, Amita Tomarajan, I'm your person. I'm not a, I've said I'm Kameradas, I'm a servant of lust, but actually I'm yours. This, 
I'm not really a servant of lust at all. I belong to you. Yeah? But, tomare charya, shongshara bhajinu, but leaving you, giving you up, I have worshipped material existence. It's not a common term that we hear, but the point is we're supposed to worship Krishna. But instead of giving our energy, our focus, giving everything to Krishna, we've, we're instead, we've worshipped uh, this material. We've, we've given all our focus, our energy. We've, we've become servants of lust, servants of the material energy. We've become enamored by this material existence. But in this way, he says, Bhulaya apanadhana. I've forgotten my real treasure, which is you, which is devotional service to you. Just forgotten it. Well, he hasn't completely forgotten it, otherwise he wouldn't be singing this song. But... Uh, that's the way he feels. Uh, this uh, another famous song which we'll sing next, Bhulia Tomari. He begins with these words. Uh, his he opens his series of apart from the introductory song in Sharanagati, uh, Bhulia Tomari, Shongshaya. Forgetting you, I've come to this material world and suffered in so many ways. We'll get through to that. Gopinath. Tumitur shakali you know everything. Before he said, Gopinath tumitur shakali paro, you can, you can do everything, you know everything. Apanara jane, he's already said, I'm yours, I'm your person. So again he's saying, I'm apana, he's speaking in the third person here. Apanara jane, dandia eka, now you punish your person. Speaking in the third person, but he's referring to himself. He said, I'm your person, so you punish your person. You punish. And give me a place at your lotus feet. Or give a place to that person at your lotus feet. To not be punished is, is, is worse. He's asking you, punish so that may seem to be a very strange request. You, it's not very common that someone will come to say, you please punish me. But to be punished means to be accepted as a servant. If, if someone ignores you, that means they have no relationship with you. If someone punishes you, just like the father may punish the son. Nowadays, they're not supposed to. Uh, but that's also part of his, that's an important part of establishing the relationship. The father punishes the son for the son's well-being. And the son appreciates that. It's also an act of love. These foolish people, they think that love just means giving their children ice cream. But it's more important than giving them ice creams is giving them punishment. And you may think, well, that's fostering child abuse. But uh, here, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you punish me. He doesn't say, give me ice cream. He's not asking for sense gratification. No, you get me out of this sense gratification. Punish me. Get me out of this sense gratification. Give me a place at your lotus feet. I'm not meant for this sense, nonsense sense enjoyment, but I'm completely immersed in it. So you punish me and bring me to, you to your Lord's feet. There are many instances of this. Uh, Nityananda Prabhu kicked hard Shivananda Sain in the chest, at which uh, sh, uh, Shivananda's son, uh, nephew, Srikant, became very upset. Why is he punishing my wife? He's, he's a respectable person. But Shivananda thought, ah, oh, very good. Now, now I know that I'm fully accepted by you. 
because you don't you don't do you only do that to someone who is you you absolutely don't care about at all or you you hate them or yeah they're an enemy or you do it to so you you can't do that to someone who's dear to you and if you have a relationship with them unless they're very dear to you because you know that they'll take it in the right spirit because nityananda he it's not that he thought all these things shall i he spontaneously kicked him hard and shivananda thought oh very nice thank you very much now you've accepted me as your servant so all these are these are all subtleties of of what it means savior savak bhav the feelings between who is served and who is the servant which foolish people they can't understand at all they think that being nice to people thinks it's just smiling at them and that's all and learning how to be nice and compassionate and considerate and sensitive and all this kind of thing but they are all right okay those are good things but sometimes you're supposed to slap them also if there's actually a relationship not that that's the thai bhav that you're always slapping but it's there sometimes uh so now gopinath now he's directly accusing gopinath eh gopinath a a ki bichara tava now is this what is this what you think huh he's directly accusing him blaming him bhaktivinod is blaming bimukha deke charo nija jane na karo karo na lava you're the ocean of mercy you come to this material world to give your mercy i'm your servant i'm in trouble i'm turned away from you you can see that so and you you're just leaving me alone uh you, you i am your own personal servant i become inimical to you or or in the, but but you don't give me even a drop of your mercy so he's blaming gopinath he's prodding him come on you have to be merciful to me it is so usually one can beg for mercy please please what is mercy you can't you can't bribe someone to give mercy it has to come is mercy means it's coming from up to down and the one who's down just has to like the chatak a bird is the example is given just waiting for the rain to come when will the rain come he's just depending on it to come he can't force the rain to come but here bhakti no he's not waiting he's he's pushing you got to give me your mercy you must give me your mercy why aren't you giving me your mercy what's wrong with you kishob ah amito muraka ati i'm telling you again i'm a complete fool ah i i kishay but i don't know what's good i don't know what's good for me kabu na bhuji i can never understand what's actually good for me tai heno mama gotti therefore i'm in this situation i'm a rascal i'm a fool i i never understood what was good for me therefore i'm in this situation ah uh, so gopinath you are the biggest pandit you know everything Why do I even have to tell you this? Ah, murhera mango the tumi anbeshi be a dash a nab bhavo par that ah you know everything. I'm meant to. I'm your servant. I'm in a terrible situation. I'm not blaming you for my getting in this situation, but here I am. I am in this situation, suffering in material life. a servant of lust i can't find how to get out of this situation you find it out you you know what to do you find out what to do i don't know what to do i'm hopeless you are my hope amara bharasha to me you are my hope you find out what to do to save me don't think of me as an outsider even though i'm act i'm a i become a servant of lust I become uh, indifferent to you bimuk but you you have to find you don't think 
I'm, I'm acting in a, I, I know I'm acting in a wrong way, but I can't, I don't have any strength of my own. You have to pick me up. And he goes on in the same theme. Gopinas, Amaru Painai, I don't know what to do. I, I, what, what am I supposed to do? I, I can't find any way what I'm supposed to do. But to me, Kripa Kori, Amare Loile, Shongshari Udharapai. So you be merciful. You, uh, take me. You take, you being, being merciful, you take me and lift me up. Deliver me from this material existence. Gopinath Porechi Mayara Ferry. I've, I've come into this, I've fallen into this cycle of Maya, this, this, uh, illusion of maya always t- just like you may see at the uh at the uh fairground they have these things this 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 big wheel it's called in english in america ferris wheel it's called in america and they have other ones which go round and round like this very fast and they play some music ding 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 ding, 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 ding. So it's like that. You're just going round and round and going nowhere and there's some nice music, but it's all meaningless. So I've fallen into this situation. Then dhanadara shuta ghireche amare kamete rekeche jari. So this dhan, dara, suta, wealth, property, uh, wife, children, griha, kshetra, sutapta, vitta, all these things, they're surrounding me. I'm surrounded by all these things. I'm supposed to be serving you, but I'm surrounded by all this. And it's simply, all of this is simply, I, I developed all of this out of material desire. Maya, I had so many material desires, and Maya provided me with wealth, children, home, respectability, position. I'm now I'm surrounded by it all, and this lust, calm, is just instead of making me satisfied, it's just wearing me down. I'm worn out, tired, tired by all this. But you're in, you, 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 when one's in the trap, you can't get out. Kamete rekeche chai, gopinath, monje pagla, my mind is completely insane, mad. Why? Namane shashona, shoda achetona, bishoye roye che ghor. Again, he used this word ghor. The idea of very, very dark and terrible. So I, I, I don't, uh, my mind is completely mad. It doesn't take any good instruction. It doesn't take, even though I'm, I, I'm punished by the material, shashan can mean uh, instruction. It can mean authority. It can mean punishment. So I don't, I don't, my mind doesn't, it doesn't uh, follow, uh, doesn't acknowledge any of those things. I know that by, I'm, I'm doing all the, I'm acting out of lust, I have to be punished for this, I have to suffer for this. Janama morana mala, life after life after life, to suffer all of this. But I'm all that, I know, I know, but I'm just like unconscious, like it is not happening. Uh, one, one may be in a situation, he hears, like Dhritarashtra. He heard again, no, no, this is not right, but he's just as if no one had said anything to him. He could see it's coming, the destruction of my whole family, but right now I'm comfortable. And he couldn't, he, pashanapina pashati. He could see, but he, just as if he's unconscious. It's the power of Maya. 
by which one is as if unconscious of everything that's going to happen. And therefore, Bishoye Roye Chego. I, I can see I'm in a terrible situation, but right now it's comfortable. And even one may be mentally very uncomfortable, but one still goes through the motions of being comfortable. Yeah, I have a nice house, nice wife, servants, respectable position. Actually, in my heart, I feel very... I feel no pleasure in this, but I have to go through the motions of appearing... I, it's like a drama I'm in, and I have to go on interacting with others. They expect me to act in such and such a way. Someone comes, can you give a... Do you, you have to give a subscription for the upcoming puja. He gives a subscription. He's a respectable person, has to give a certain amount suitable to his station. He goes on like this. Some servant comes and says, my daughter needs to be married. So he has to give some money for the... He has to act, go on acting. And all this gives him some... People are giving him respect. He has nice comfortable bed to sleep on. So everything externally is all very comfortable. And he goes along with this. But in the heart, there's no pleasure whatsoever. And we'll see this in, up, in some other songs we're going to sing. Also, Bhaktino Thakur, how he, he sings about all of this. Vriddhakala ailo shabshuk bhagalo. Now, he describes how he went through his whole life. Now old age has come and all, pretty, all happiness has simply fled. Mm. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm stuck in this terrible situation of sense gratification. It might not seem to be terrible. It might seem to be very... Uh, there's a word in English, genteel. I don't know the Russian word. I don't even know if there's a Sanskrit word for that. But it means, yes, very aristocratic and cultured and civilized. Yuck. Hmm. So, Gopinath, I'm stuck in all of this. I'm stuck, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor that I have to go through all the motions of doing this, of acting like a respectable gentleman. Ane, Gopinath, Haraje Meneach, and now I accept, I'm defeated, I, 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 I admit it. Ane ko jaton hoilo bifo, I tried so much. Couldn't do anything. It all became useless. Oh, I, I couldn't do. I tried. I, I wanted to overcome lust. I wanted to get free from it. I wanted to serve you. I tried. But I just... I couldn't do anything. I'm just stuck here. Binoda Takelo Boshi. So many demons they reached to you. I didn't go anywhere. I'm, I'm trying to, sir. I'm just stuck. So, Ekona Barasha to me. Again, he says, You are my hope. This is Ashabandha. The, uh, among the symptoms of someone in ecstatic devotional service, Bhava Bhakti, he feels uh, the, the, that. Uh, I have no hope. I, I'm completely, I, I can't, I want to be a devotee. I, I'm, I'm so unqualified. But I still, I retain hope. I retain hope that even though I'm, I'm not at all qualified to be a devotee, but I have the hope that someday Krishna will deliver me. That is the hope that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is... Well, it's almost as if he's hopeless. But you are my... I, I'm feeling completely hopeless. I tried, I tried, 
I tried, I couldn't get anywhere, I'm still stuck, surrounded by my whole material position. You are my hope. I have to put full faith in you. My own efforts are going nowhere. The only thing I can do, the only thing I've got left is to call out to you. The famous story of Draupadi. She's got nothing left she can do. Everything she put her faith in, even her, her husband's, her own strength was ne never going to be enough to, you know, to overcome Dushasan. The only hope, Krishna, he's not even there. If he'd have been there, well, by arrangement of his own internal potency, he wasn't there. But... Uh, he wasn't apparently there, but she knew. My only hope is Govinda, and she called out to him. So that's the only thing. When there's nothing left, do we have to come to that situation? This is what sadhana bhakti is meant for. That we're not meant to go to the, we're not meant to fall down to the lowest position. We're meant to come up. The bhakti no Thakur is feeling. And this is required in sadhana bhakti. It's, it's not that we think, okay, now I'm going to chant extra rounds and I'm going to do fasting and follow all the kadashis and I'm going to storm the gates of the spiritual world. And it doesn't work like that. Even though Bhakti Nod Thakur is uh, himself setting the example of an ideal sadhaka, although he's actually a siddha, but he shows the example of uh, being someone who's trying for perfection, but all our sadhana, all our endeavors in Krishna consciousness, they can only come to perfection by this hopelessly, helplessly, not hopelessly, helplessly calling out to Krishna. You're the only hope for me. So Gopinath Hridaye Boshyamo, sit in my heart. Mon ke shamiya, you just cool down my mind. Loha ni japane, take me by your own hand. And guchi be bipo daghor, again he used the word, it just deliver me, take away this very, this frighteningly dangerous situation he's in. Now, Bhaktivinoda no Tao, again, there's no Where's the danger? Every, everything seems all right externally. Of course, he went through many difficulties even from the external point of view, but basically, as everyone does in material life, but uh, everyone in this material world, and we shouldn't exactly say the Bhakti Nod Tag had material life, but uh, he's feeling, as we should all feel, we're in a very, very dangerous situation. We're always in a dangerous situation, as long as we're in this material world. So Gopinath, anatha dekhi amori, seeing me uh, as just like an orphan, unprotected. When we uh, become the servant of lust, we become unprotected. We expose ourselves to all the horrors of Maya. She presents herself as very charming, but actually, she's very horrible. Something like Putana. She looks very nice, but she's actually very, very dangerous, intent on destroying us. So, uh, when we take shelter of Krishna, then we're protected. If we don't take shelter of Krishna, then we become unprotected. Anatta, without a, without a protector. Seeing me this, in this situation, what to do? To me, Hrishikesh, you are the Lord, the master of the senses. Hrishika Domiya, Tara He Shongshwiti, Ghore. Again and again, he's using this word, Ghore, this, this, this terrible situation. To me, uh, to me, Hrishika, you are the master of the senses. I'm not in control of my senses. To be a servant of lust means to be not in control of one's senses. So to me, Hrishika, but, so you control my senses. We're supposed to control our senses, Hrishikena, Hrishikesha, Sevanam, by engaging them in the service of Krishna. We're saying, you take, forcibly take control of my senses and deliver me 
from this terrible position of sangsmati, which is a synonym of sangsara, of material existence. Then he says, Gopina, he's calling out again and again and again, you have to deliver me, come on. And now he says, Golai there's no more time now. This is my last call out to you. I'm telling you that the, the noose of material existence is around my neck. I'm going to be hung. I'm going to be killed. It's, it's right around my neck. I'm talking about it. It's right around my neck right now. So if you don't act right now, I'm finished. So Kripa Oshidari, bring your, bring the sword of your mercy and cut my bondage in this to material existence. And make this Vinod, this Bhakti Vinod, make me your servant. So that's it in summary. And we should pray like this. Hare Krishna. So more sad songs. Yes, I spoke about the blues. <laughs> this is Bhakti Vinod sings the blues. This is the spiritual blues, and there's there's actually the uh, the aura. If one is in depressed, then you have a blue aura. <laughs> those who can see auras, or those in very in very tamasic consciousness, the, the whole aura becomes very dark blue. Singing the blues, so Bhakti no taco. We'll go into that. I think the next one, what's it given in sequence? Bully Atomari. It should be.